Okay, we are looking at a clip. Um, we talked about it a little bit. I think it was with... Oh, uh, I think it was when I had Cody on. We talked about the um, Lake and Riley incident where she was <laughs> deleted because she fought back uh, against assault. Well, something recently happened. Um, I have a clip here. We're gonna we're gonna watch the whole clip's like six minutes long. We're not gonna watch the whole thing. We'll watch uh, like about two minutes of it. Um, this is Senator Josh Hawley, and I think he makes some really good points. Um, but it's it's regarding the individual who is alleged to have deleted Lake and Riley and what happened with that whole incident. Where is he now? Let's, let's find out. And then a, a Christian, the reason I'm bringing this up is a, a Christian perspective on this. How should we view this as a Christian? There's another underlying issue that we're going to see here that I think we can have a Christian perspective on perspective on, that I don't think is a problematic view to have, even though I know a lot of people say that it is. Um, even my wife, when we got married, um, and I'll get into some of the specifics of, of how she viewed it, and then kind of my point of view, and I don't, I still don't think she's completely come to where I'm at with it, but she is at least open to to it now. Senator Hall, you recognize your questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Secretary, let's just come back to Jose Ibarra, if we can. You know who that is. And I do have this sped up, um, like 1.5 speed, um, just for, for time's sake. But Good question. You know what he did? I know what he's accused of doing. Which is? Um, uh, murdering a young woman. And that wasn't the first crime that he committed in this country, was it? Um, Senator, as I've articulated previously, I'm not going to speak about the facts of the case because there is an ongoing criminal investigation. Have you read his parole file? Um, Senator, the same answer. So you're not going to say whether or not you've read the parole file? I've got it right here. Have, have you read this? Uh, Senator, I do not want to speak to the particulars of the case given the pending criminal See, uh, prosecution. Now, I, I find this interesting because you, this is a new answer today. You've changed your answers all over the map on this. And it looks like to me, you just don't want to answer the question. Two days ago, two days ago, you were asked about this in the House Homeland Security Committee. I've got the transcript right here in front of me. You were asked the same question. Jose Ibarra, why was he paroled? You said, I don't know. You said, I don't know. I don't have the case details with me today. Congressman Bishop says, you don't know. And you said, I don't know. I don't have the details with respect to that individual's case, but I would be pleased to provide them to you, Congressman. You didn't know two days ago. Now, interestingly, on April the 10th, six days before that, you gave Senator Katie Britt a different answer. She asked you the same question. She said, why was Jose Ibera paroled into the United States? You said, and I quote, ranking member Britt, there was no derogatory information of which we were aware. So you were happy to comment on the case then, on April the 10th. By April the 16th, you had developed amnesia, and today you say you just won't comment. So which is it, Mr. Secretary? Now that we have the file, I'll tell you what the difference is. Congressman Bishop didn't have the profile, and Senator Britt didn't have the profile, and now we do have the parole file. And now we all know that the reason he was paroled into this country was because lack of detention capacity, which, as you and I both know, is not a valid reason under the statute. And now that we know that for sure, this is... So, to summarize, um, he was going to go to prison, and he was let out. He was paroled because they don't have space. So, they are... Letting a, a murderer back, alleged murderer, back out in public because they don't have space for him in prison. Again, we talked about this before. As a Christian, it is not loving my neighbors to be on board with policies and, and things of that nature that allow violent criminals of any kind, um, citizens of, of uh, America or, or otherwise, um, criminal immigrants. It's not loving, it's not uh, Christ-like to do things that allows them to be around us around our neighbors 
I think it's it's wrong. So, my personal opinion on this, I think we could solve the over use of the correctional program, um, the overcapacity that we see in prisons. I think we can help that. I am pro death penalty. Now, why? Um, and you know, I've, I'm also I'm I'm pro life. How do I mesh those two things together? Well, I don't think there is a conflict there. And this is um, as I was saying before. My my wife actually used to have a uh, a more against stance more against where I'm at than than she is now. I think she's more open to where I'm at. Although I don't think she's a hundred percent where I'm at. Uh, which I mean, is fine. It doesn't matter. But these are two very different things. Death penalty, you are putting to death people that have killed people or people that have seriously hurt people, intentionally seriously hurt people or done very grotesque things to women or children. I'm in favor of that. I think people that hurt people should be killed. I think people that hurt children, hurt women, should be killed. I do not have an issue with the death penalty. So that is different from my pro-life stance because the pro-life stance is not in favor. The, the, the baby that is being deleted did nothing. They haven't hurt anybody. They have not they have not done anything wrong. They are completely innocent. They do not deserve a death penalty. So I don't have a problem with meshing those two. Now, the reason why I have a stance um, uh, pro death penalty, I've and I don't remember the exact quote. I'm probably paraphrasing it. I don't remember who it comes from either. But it is um, nothing focuses the mind on eternity quite like the end of a rope. So this whole idea that there are people who are on death row, um, they are worried about their... They know exactly when their 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 ticket's going to get punched, and so they're sitting there thinking about their life and what's coming up, and what they're about to experience. They're thinking about what comes after death. I have I have known of a lot of people who have made a decision to come to Christ on death row. I've heard of a, a bunch of stories like that, and so I think. If, if people do things like that, I do think there should be justice for it. And I think there should be a death penalty for certain horrendous crimes. And I think that death penalty could actually be a saving grace for some people. Not only does it stop them from doing it, and it will dissuade other people from doing stuff as well. But it may bring everything into perspective enough for them so that, yes, they may be losing their physical body, but their eternal soul is saved. And I think that is a wonderful thing. So that's where I stand on it. I don't, I don't have an issue meshing those two views whatsoever. Um, I think it's horrible that we are allowing things like this to happen in our country and allowing stuff like what happened to Lake and Riley to happen to women and children in this country. And it needs to stop.